Hi, I'm Tim. In this video, it's going to be a TurboCAD tutorial where we're going to draw a set of F4 planets. The F4 is this guy right here. It was the um, mainstay fighter for the United States Air Force, Navy, Marine Corps in the 1960s, early 1970s. Um, over 5,200 of these airplanes are built. It's, it's just an iconic fighter, swift wing, etc. So what I want to do with this video is we will go onto the internet somewhere, find a set of three views of the F4, top side and front view. We will download those to our computer, import them into TurboCAD, trace over the uh, three view to create a uh, CAD plan in TurboCAD, and use that to build a model. And the model that I'm going to try to do is along the lines of this guy, my original uh, profile lightweight fighter. The plan is to use the park zone equipment, Keep it within these rough dimensions. This model weighs 1.7 7 ounces. The target weight for the F4 model would be 2 ounces. <clears throat> it will be a profile model just to keep things simple and we'll just see how things work out. I have no idea where this project is going to go, but step number one is to draw the plans. And at the end of the video, the complete set of plans will be on the video. You can screen capture to get the plans to print them out and um, take enlarge them and use them to try to build your own model. But the plans first. Let's get to it. So this is the model that we'll base the F4 off of. It's a high wing foam flyer, wingspan of 24 inches, fuselage about 17 and a half inches long. As you can see, this model flies absolutely great. It, um, the weight was 1.7 ounces. So we have a little bit of room to play with on the F4. If we go two ounces a little bit above, I think we'll be okay. Very distinctive view of the F4, the dog-toothed wing, the um, distinctive fuselage profile, and the anhedral, the tail. Uh, I plan on using two, uh, three channels. We'll use elevator, aileron, and throttle for the model. So the first step is going on to Google, just searching for FU, F4 three views. You'll find a wide range of them. Just pick one that has pretty clean lines you think will work well. Uh, here's the one that I picked. We'll go ahead and click it. And then I use screen capture on the Apple, it's command uh, shift four. Others, uh, a QuickTime does have a screen capture program that's available for Mac and Windows. Once we get the picture, we can drag it onto the de desktop. You can open it with preview just to take a look at it. Uh, that's what it looks like. Now we're on TurboCAD. And what we're gonna do is simply drag that image onto TurboCAD, but it's very important to set up a layer that is for the three view that is separate from the layer that we're going to draw on. So we have selected the three view layer. We've drawn on the image and on this layer, we can select the image, move it around, and more importantly, we can resize it uh, for our three view drawing. So what I'm going to do now is reselect the three view on the three view layer and just bring it up a little bit higher. And using the gripper tool, we're going to make it smaller because we're going to come up with a size that we're just estimating will work well with the high wing foam flyer, the 24 inch wingspan model. It will kind of be our, our aim point for the size of the F profile F4 model that we're going to build. So now we go to the plan uh, layer. We select the fuselage foam flyer. I always make a copy of some of the important things, just put it to the side in case I need it or corrupt the original one at some point. You see the three view is still way too big, so we're gonna select that on the three view layer. Just shrink it down until it approximates a size that we think will be small enough to accommodate the park's own power and control systems that were demonstrated with the high wing foam flyer. So now we can select the fuselage and just overlay it onto the F4 three view to see how we're coming with our estimate, our guess of the size of the F4 three view that will ultimately be our plans for the F4 model. So we're gonna make it a little bit smaller and yeah, we'll take a look at the top view and see how that looks on the F4. 
get a little bit closer, shrink it down just a little bit more. And now we'll rotate it 90, uh, 180 degrees so that we can have the top view match what is with our model, the foam flyer. And that's looking a little bit closer for the right size that we'll trace for the F4. Now that we have the size correctly, what we do on the F4 plan layer, not the 3 view layer, we start drawing, tracing over the 3 view. So all this drawing is on a separate layer than the F4. You'll see later on I'll, I'll click the 3 uh, view layer on and off. We just take various tools, straight lines, curves, etc. I drew a center line initially, as you can see. And we start to do the outlines of what our foam F4 plan will look like. Again, it's a profile model, so we don't have to worry about too much of fuselage dimensions, but the top view of the wing and tail will be important. Again, we just take our time tracing over that top view. Notice I put in a line by the nose so we know the front of the um, F4 plan. And here we've gotten rid of the three view, and you can see we're making progress with one half of the plan. This is a parallel line tool. We'll have two widths of the 3 16 inch foam board for the fuselage. And once we've done one half, we select it with the mirror command. We select the whole half, snap to the two endpoints, and we very easily create a mirror image of the F4 without having to draw the second half. It is totally accurate. We can select this, and we'll use the group command under edit to make it one entity for moving around, which is making it a lot easier to copy and move around the top view of the fuselage. Now we can check that. There's our foam flyer, put it over the top view. I think it'll be close enough for what we're doing on this project um, for the F4. Now we're on the three view layer again, and we're going to rotate this back to level because the next step to do is the side view of the F4, again the profile side view. So here's our foam flyer which we know is the right size for flying with the park zone equipment. Go put out a line for the front of the F4. The back will be taken care of by the tail. Uh, using the Bezier curve tool, and I've turned off the snaps. It's a good technique. We just click along the nose for the curve section to start describing the outline for the profile of the F4. Once we get to the back of the cockpit, we will turn on the snaps really quickly to snap to the end of that curve, turn it off, draw the curve, the bottom half of the nose radome right for the F4. And then we can use straight lines for the top of the fuselage, bottom, tail surfaces, etc. We can get rid of the, in the um, three view view, we can click it off a little eye, um, ball icon to uh, get rid of that image to see how it's coming along with the uh, tracing over the side view of the F4. So once we've completed the side view, it's time to think about the airfoil. What will have to happen is we'll have multiple airfoils due to the swept wing, <coughs> the root, and about halfway out. It's important to keep the airfoil the same width. I use four tenths of an inch just to avoid um, warps of the wing when you, when you put the top over the ribs. You use a curve tool, no snap, and I just click along. And I'll be honest with you, I just estimate what an airfoil looks like for a model of this type. If you want, you can import an image of the airfoil, trace it a little more accurately, but this should work okay for a model of this nature. So we do the uh, root airfoil at the fuselage and then the airfoil uh, out where the wing um, dihedral is, is put onto midway out. And we can show that's where it goes onto the um, wing two thirds out and then the root airfoil is located here. As I mentioned, we'll use three channels for this. I'm not going to put in a rudder. I'll have uh, ailerons in the wing, <clears throat> elevator, and then the uh, throttle through the electronic speed control. So the final step is to have the front view that's necessary for the dihedral on the wing and the anhedral on the tail. 
Again, we're not altering the size of the three view. We know that that's the correct size that we've got from the top view. And as before, on the plan layer, we're tracing over the fuselage enough information that we can get what we need, which is the wing dihedral and the tail anhedral for our model. So again, using the layer eyeball control, we can turn the three view on and off. We've drawn in the, um, one of the uh, elevators. Now that we have half of the fuselage, it's very easy with the mirror command to select the entire item, snap to the two endpoints, and we have a nice mirror image of the front view of our F4 model. Select that and group it under the edit command. We can move the front view down to our side and top view, and these are the three views of our model that are appropriately sized to what we are going to use as a baseline from that high wing foam flyer. Now, the other thing we're going to do now is find the center gravity of a swept wing. I have a separate video on that. I'll put a card on it for that. But what we do is we take the root cord of the wing located here, and then there's a tip cord. We take the root cord, and I've drawn these red filled in uh, boxes just to give a graphical illustration. And we put the length of the root cord against the tip cord, then the tip wing cord, that length illustrated by these two boxes to the root cord, and we connect these with a line. The intersection of these two lines is the location of the mean or average aerodynamic cord. Now, the aerodynamic cord doesn't mean anything. It's just a item, a, a term we use to locate the center of gravity on a swept wing. But the mean aerodynamic cord is the cord along which you measure 25% back to get your center of gravity. So we measure the mean aerodynamic cord on this model is 8.2 inches. 25% of that is 2 inches. We draw a line 2 inches back. That is the center of gravity location for this swept wing. We can get rid of all these construction lines. This is the location of the mean aerodynamic of, of the center of gravity. We extend that to the fuselage. The intersection of the that line, 25% back of the mean aerodynamic cord to the fuselage, that is the center of gravity location for this swept wing model. The model has to balance at this point. So we have all three views of our model complete, and I put a, um, you can see we slide it over to the fuselage, top view, it looks about right. The fuselage side view that is, comes out about right, we just traced it over. And you notice that I have markings for 12 inches. So if you print this out, you have a real world measurement of what that should be. So this is another view of the location of the center of gravity, super important. Uh, here are the um, top and side views compared to the foam flyer. You can print this out if you want. This is the top view with the 12 inch scale, followed by the side view with the 12 inch scale, and finally the front view with the 12 inch scale. So, good luck with your plans. Uh, next step is to build this and see how it flies. Talk to you later.